Mark's just a great guy. He's a hard worker and he's all about the team. I, I can trust him to lead the team and he really gets his, his uh, teammates working together. For example, last year I remember one game we're down seven points in the fourth quarter and Mark on defense uh, call, comes up to the line of scrimmage, calls an audible, leads to a fumble, gets us back in the game. Then he turns around on offense and leads us in the game winning drive. We kick a field goal to win the game in the last minute. Truly a phenomenal performance and a great teammate. He's always helped with the younger kids in the family. I am really blessed that he's my son. Let's tell us a little bit about Mark. Oh, me and Mark, we've been tight since the sixth grade. I mean, we like the same stuff, we spend time at each other's houses. We're basically brothers. I mean, we're as close as it gets. Now, tell us what it's been like to be on the same team as Mark. Oh, Mark, I mean, he's such a good athlete. He's smart, strong, he's fast, and he's a great leader. I mean, Coach thinks of him as a son. And me and the rest of the guys on the team really respect him, but it's a little hard sometimes with him getting all the attention, but, I mean, what can you do? I feel like he's a pretty flawless guy. I mean, yeah, uh, there is one thing, but it's not that big of a deal. I mean, I'm not even sure if that was his. His what? Well, the other day, he was taking me to practice, and I looked in his back seat, and I saw a pipe. I asked him if it was his, and he said he was just holding it for someone. I didn't really care. I told him I didn't care, as long as he put the team in school first. Has he? I, I think so. I, I'm just really excited about Mark. He's a, he's a really cool young man. He's been coming to our youth group for probably three years or so, give or take. And every time that I get to interact with him, he seems really excited about God. He's excited about God's Word. I mean, he's got different Bible verses memorized. and. Um, every time I talk to him, he just he just seems like he's excited about what, what God is doing and um, and what he wants to learn about him and how to be an influence for him in this world, you know. And I, I think one of the cool things is as he interacts with the younger guys that are a part of our youth ministry, that he just seems like a really great role model for them. And I mean, overall, I would say I'm just excited about what, what God has in store for his life. And I know that he's got a bright future ahead of him. Tell us a little bit about Mark. Oh, Mark is such a great guy. I couldn't ask for anything better in a boyfriend. We've been together for about a year and a half, and we just grow closer and closer every day. He's funny and smart and attractive. I really think we have a future together. Do you guys have any set plans? We plan to get married at St. John's in Massachusetts, and after that we'll honeymoon in Cancun. Wow, you guys sound like you're serious about each other. Yeah, I just couldn't see myself being with anybody else. So, what about when Mark goes off to college next year? Oh, I'm not worried about that. We've already been together, so I know he's committed. Been together? You know what I mean. I'm just really proud of Mark. Um, All-state quarterback, honor student, never really gets into any trouble. Um, I just feel really blessed to have him as a son. All right, you guys, thanks for coming out. So we're doing a personal eye profile on Mark. Uh, Mark. So just go ahead and uh, tell us some of your experiences with the guy. Dude, Mark. Mark. Mark's crazy. Party animal. Do you remember that one time we left, um, was, it, was it Helen's party? Helen. Oh, Starting yeah. on first half. And he had the stupidest idea. He was like, guys, let's turn the lights off. Let's turn them off. And we're like, dude, that, that's stupid. No. He's like, I'm doing it anyway. So he does it. We're driving, we're driving. All of a sudden, well, boom! Like, what? What? What, what, what? what are we hit? He we gets hit? out, uh -oh. he gets out. It's a cop car. It's a cop car. He gets of back course. in, he pulls out, drives, all of a sudden we hear a cop We're car. We're everywhere. We're going left cop and cars. right. This cop, cop car. It was going crazy. It was crazy. Flashing lights everywhere. Everywhere. He's like, guys, we gotta get out of the car. Gotta ditch it. So we, so we ditch the car, cornfield, we get out, we run. Dipped out of that. He goes home and tells his mom, mm -hmm. someone stole my car. Somebody stole my car. And she bought it. She bought it. Mark is the man. He's the man. Dude, that reminds me of this one time, okay? So, me and Mark and a couple guys, we were in this cornfield, right? And so we go onto this farm. All of a sudden, he oh, whips out. He whips out his yeah. gun shotgun and he shoots two cows. Not one, but two cows. It's like the cow cow. It's the cow cow. <laughs> He's the man. He's a party animal. And he was so drunk the next morning at church. He played drums in the band. Debut. Like a boss. Like Didn't a boss. He get caught. I date him. So tell us about Mark. Oh yeah, Mark's really cool. He seems to get along with everybody. Plays drums in the worship team. 
Seems premature in his face. Mark? Oh, Mark, he's awesome. He's like the best football player ever. He gets all the girls, hangs out with the coolest people, and he is gorgeous. I mean, look at him. And he goes to church. He is like perfect. I mean, I know my chances with him are slim and all because I'm only a freshman and he's like a totally hot senior, but I think he kind of likes me. I mean, there's this one time a couple weeks ago, we were at one of my friends' bonfires and he was there. And I was with about five of my friends talking and he kept looking and whispering to his friends. I think he was totally talking about me. I mean, I know he has a girlfriend, but <laughs> we all know how he thinks of her. You know, I'm really concerned about Mark. He's got all the tools to succeed, uh, but if he keeps doing some of the things that I've heard that he's doing, it's really gonna get him in trouble. I don't think that he understands that the choices that he's making now in high school are really gonna catch up with him later. Even if the cops don't catch him at what he's doing, he's making habits that are really gonna drag him down in the long run. You know, I've seen kids like him before, and so many of them just waste their God-given talents by getting, getting caught up in the wrong crowd and doing the wrong thing. Um, you know, some of them eventually drop out of school or drop out of college. I see him here, um, working mowing the lawn or filling in when the janitor is sick. If they don't zone out sometime in college, then, then they, they get into this nasty scene where they're hanging out with the wrong people, um, they really get lulled into just an alternate reality. Alcohol, sex, drugs, that becomes their reality. Once that hits, there's just one thing waiting for them, and that's prison. You know, kids always laugh and smirk when they hear me say things like this. And I bring up stories like Bob Cahoon. You know, they just say, eh, that's not going to happen to me. Well, that's what they all say, and even the smart ones like Mark, um, he really needs to wake up, or that could be him. <laughs>